Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. Today, Pastor Jeremy File is teaching on the application of truth. The Bible instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Pastor Jeremy is teaching us on how to apply the truth. We believe today's message is going to strengthen, encourage, and maybe even challenge you. Let's head into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy. Some of you are going to need new friends if you're ever going to break the barriers that there's just constantly been built in your life. If you want to break through those, you need some new friends. You can't soar with eagles and cluck with chickens at the same time. Let's figure this out. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you thankful for the worm? We're making this year count. Are you with me on that? Yes. I'm, I'm saying this year, 2022, I'm going to make it count. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, let's make it count. How do we do that? We're going to apply the word of our, of our God to our life over and over and over again and keep applying it. Just keep applying it. Just keep on applying it. You know, I, I thought about that. Uh, washed and got clean this morning. I had to apply soap once again to this dirty body. I thought to myself, isn't it something? Just by doing nothing, you can get dirty. And that's the way it is spiritually. You can just be out here not trying to pursue any kind of sin and get dirty and get the dust of this world on you. And you need the Word of God. That's the cleansing agent, praise God, that will wash your life and set you up for victory after victory after victory. Praise the name of Jesus. Remember, we've looked at this, John 17, 17. Uh, I'll reference several scriptures today. Just take note of them. Go look them up yourself. Jesus is the one speaking, and he's praying, and he says, Your word, Father, is truth. So when we're talking about the application of the truth, we're talking about the application of the word. The word of God is the parent force of the universe. It's the, it's the creating force of the universe. Remember back in Genesis, the Holy Spirit hovered over the deep. And when God spoke, light be, light, it was here. He spoke it first, showing us the pattern of how we should imitate him now. If you fast forward as New Testament believers, we're going to have to speak the word if we're going to apply the word. So in its simplest form, when we're talking about applying the word, it starts with your words. If you don't speak the word, you're not applying the truth. If you speak the circumstance, that doesn't have the power to change anything. It's the truth that never changes. The truth by nature is absolute. It will never change. It will never change. It's absolute. And you need to know this. That means no matter what country you travel to, no matter the, your color of skin, no matter what side of the tracks you're from, the truth is the truth. So what are you going to do about it? As for me and my house, I decided to stake my life on the truth. I haven't regretted it. I like what Garrett said there. You know, I haven't regretted giving. You know why I haven't regretted it? Because I found it in the Word, and that's why I give. I don't give for man to be impressed. I don't give for favor of man. I give because I saw God so loved the world, He gave. And He's the one I'm trying to be like, not some movie star. Come on now. We looked at the story of Naaman Wednesday night. How many of you were here? We had a pretty good crowd Wednesday night. How many were here Wednesday night? Well, you missed out. If you missed out on that, maybe you were able to stream... That's a powerful story in the Old Testament. And these stories are in the Bible for a reason. It's for us to look at, and God, he left all these details, and I'm kind of thankful it wasn't me in there, uh, because some of these you can learn what not to do. Others you can learn what to do. And Naaman, he started out going left there, what not to do. He got angry when the man of God sent his messenger, kind of like church members do when they call for prayer. And I say, well, I'm going to send one of my assistant ministers. I've noticed they get angry. I want pastor there. Well, I'll call you Naaman from now on. <laughs> what happened? Elisha sent his servant. That was to his own house. Here comes a commander from the Syrian army. Letters from kings were exchanged. He shows up at the man of God's house. And the man of God himself doesn't come greet him. He felt disrespected, and the Bible says he went off in a rage. But his servants, it matters who you have around you. That's why this tool of life links could change your life if you'll jump in and apply it. Some of you won't no matter what, and that's okay, but I'm still going to be here, and I'm still going to tell you, life links is a God idea. It's not just some extra we do around here. Amen. It's worth you coming and plugging in, making friends that are Christians. Hey, Naaman had a servant and said to him, 
Hey, if he had asked you to do something great, you would have done it. Why not go dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times like he said? See, God's instructions are specific. But man wants to make it complicated. You know where a lot of American Christians would hang up? Why seven times? Why seven? Why can't I just go dip once? Instead of asking those questions, why? Just apply what he said to do. <laughs> Understanding will follow. Do you think after Naaman dipped down that seven times and came up and his skin looked better than any of ours in here? After having leprosy? Do you think he cared that the prophet said seven times then? He didn't care. See, Here's what happens. The enemy always wants to get you hung up on a detail that really doesn't matter in the whole scheme of things. You're all hung up on, well, why seven? I just don't understand. Well, God didn't say understand, then obey. He said, I'm Lord, I'm creator, obey. So all we've got to do is take these instructions and apply them. It is not difficult at all to apply what the Word of God says. I'm reminded, I haven't told this story in a while, but when I first worked uh, as an adult as a, at a church, I was doing what many would consider very menial tasks. And on my first day on the job, they said, here's your job, Jeremy. You're going to put the pastor's wife's desk together. And this isn't just your little tiny desk. This has a big, huge desk, a credenza behind it with a top you've got to put together. I didn't have the heart to tell them I've never done this a day in my life. <laughs> but see, ministry will stretch you and have you do things you didn't think you could do. Well, I put that desk together. I had an instruction book. It almost felt as thick as the Bible when I first opened it up. And I was following it. I'm telling you in detail. And I know they were wondering, is he going to do everything this slow? Because I was making sure I did it right. Well, it built a little confidence in me after I built that desk. So then it's time for that, you know, credenza behind there. So I'm feeling a little confident. Instruction manual? I pulled the, the man card out, right? Who needs instructions? I already put this together. Following the instructions. Sounds just like God's people throughout history. You do what God said, things go well, you start thinking, look what I've done. Uh, you were following instructions there, simple one. But as the story goes, I decided to do it on my own. Because now I know it's prefabricated, pre-drilled. I can do this. Start doing it. Looked at it. The finished product was crooked. Guess what I got to do? Undo what I had just done, get the instructions out, and redo it. Now, thank God that was a desk. I think about how people are living their lives. They're doing that same thing, and they don't realize till 50, 60 years pass, oh, wait a minute. Let me go get the instructions out and rebuild my life now. Don't let that be you. Now, if that is you, don't feel bad. You can only start where you are. You can't do anything about the past. So I was glad I went back and did it right. I'd rather do that than leave it crooked and have my name on it. Yeah, remember that? That's Jeremy put that together. It's prefabricated. Somehow I did it crooked. Now that's a dirty shame. That shows you you may not call me if you're doing construction, but that's okay. Call me if you need a word. I'm not going to fabricate a word from God. I'll give you a scripture. Thus says the Lord, Isaiah chapter 5, right? See, that's how I talk. You for sure want to hear a word from God, make sure it's in the Bible. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806-418-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next LifeLink. It takes humility to apply the Word of God. See, Naaman had to humble himself and do what the prophet of God said through his messenger, but it delivered him from his bondage. If you want to be delivered from your bondage, you're going to have to humble yourself and apply the word of God. And you're going to, have to be more passionate about that than what the doctor would tell you if he was giving you pills. 
<laughs> it's amazing how we live in a society. Uh, I mean, look, they've hijacked the whole country pretty much. Whatever a doctor says, that's how our whole country goes. It shouldn't be that way. Y'all know how I, how I feel about that. Uh, we had men bleed. Some of them were doctors, by the way, for their freedoms. Not to give it up for fear of disease. Somebody says, are you saying the disease isn't real? It's real. But the word of God is stronger. So I'm going to keep applying the word of God. Psalms 91 is a great one for you to know. See, if you have your child in our Christian school here, guess what the scripture was this month? Psalms 91. Well, they've done that one before. Exactly. I want that to be a part of their life. That they never forget. My, my children always give me the feedback. Oh, we love it, Dad. You picked one that we've done before. I said, yeah, I'm doing that on purpose. You know, after a few years pass, it's going to happen anyway, right? Because my job is to engrave the Word of God on your heart as an adult, and that includes your children. We're building strong families here at Accelerate Church. It takes a humble person to simply do what they're told to do. I'm reminded of the story I told in chapel since I was talking about our Christian school here, Thursday was chapel. By the way, it's open if you ever want to come at 10 a.m. You can come and sit in here. I preach to them just like I preach right here to you guys. But to kids? Yeah. And you know what? Some of my youngest always tell me, I like chapel today. I like that. Well, I told the story of Gideon. We read it. There's a lot of scripture to cover. We looked at that whole story of Gideon. And what's amazing to me, as I'm taking them through that, I showed them in three different places. It says, and Gideon did as he was told. I said, it's so simple. People make this so convoluted and difficult. If you'll just do what you're told by the Lord, He will use you even if you're hiding from the enemy. He'll come and say, you mighty man of valor. Because I want to tell you, when you do the word, you become a mighty man, a mighty woman of God. Literally. But if you don't ever apply the word, you'll be a weakling your whole life. Don't settle for weakling status. Even though it's the trend in Christianity, don't settle for that. Wow. Think of Gideon. He led 300 men to defeat a mighty army. He had 32,000, and the Lord said that's too many. Why? Because it seems like the larger the number, the less likely obedience will happen in unification. In this end time hour, you are not called by God to unify with false doctrine, false preachers or teachers. You're called to unify around the truth. When you do that, get ready to see God move. He used 300 men to defeat a mighty army because they, see, it set it up in the Bible. You ought to read the story sometime. Maybe I should have just preached on it again today, but I'm just telling you about this. Gideon said to all those 300 do what I do when I do it. That's after the word tells us three times he did what he was told to do. See, you can't get around this in life. You're going to have to do what you're told to do by somebody. Who do you esteem higher than yourself? You better start esteeming God higher than yourself by giving attention to his word. And you better find yourself humble under the mighty hand of God. I'll talk more about it in this service. Listen to me carefully. Humility is something you have to choose to put on. Now, I, I looked in my closet this morning, and I lay out my suits in a certain order of the last I've worn them, etc. because I like to look up with the tie hanging there to know when is the last time I wore this. I want at least a service to pass where I wear the same suit again, right? So I, I put them up there. That's just how I am. My wife tells me, well, I don't remember what you wore. No one even cares. I said, I know, but I care. So I hang them up in that order, you know, and I looked at it this morning. And did you know I didn't call my wife as much as I love her? I didn't call my children. I didn't call my mom and dad. Say, hey, could you come and humble me? Could you come put my suit on for me? What would you think about that? A grown man, seven children, been married coming up on 20 years. I call mama. Hey, Mom, there's a suit in my closet. You think you could come out to the house and help me out? Somebody says, that's weird. That's real weird. <laughs> Yet that's how Christians operate. Lord, humble me. He ain't doing it. He's not doing it because he told you to be clothed with it. I, let, let's read. I better show you the Bible because I can tell some of you are getting nervous up in this service. Say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Come on, say it like you mean it. Thank God for the word. Thank 1 Peter 5, 5, likewise, younger people, submit yourselves. See, 
I tell you, we read right through verses and don't even, it just, we don't even get it. You can't have someone else submit yourself. That's on you to do. Do I need to tell you God won't submit to himself for you? You're going to have to submit yourselves. And specifically, he says here to elders. See, this is the beautiful thing about church. Church is where you find elders, leaders, people that are walking out the word. And I said this a few weeks ago, and I know some of you have taken heed to this. you got to stop imitating the wrong people. Start imitating those that through faith and, and patience inherit the promise. Amen? You know, a movie star, they're typically not walking in the blessing of God. Well, I know, but they're trendy. They're wearing this. And also, we like pattern ourselves after them. What are we doing? Let's pattern ourselves after those that walk with God. So that's one thing that's happened in the church nationwide here, at least in America. Everybody's trying to be cool, church. But, I, you know, I don't care about that. I care about God being in the place. Everybody's chasing relevance. God is the most relevant thing in any of our lives. I want him, and I want him bad. Yeah. He says, yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And look at this part. And be clothed with humility. What does that mean? Well, just like my suit. Everywhere I go, as long as I'm clothed in this, it goes with me. It has become a part of my life. Right now, I'm standing before you wearing what was just hanging in my closet this morning because I was clothed with this suit. We understand that. I know that's super simple. But this is how simple God makes himself in his word. He says, hey, you. Say, that's me. That's me. Be clothed with humility. But you know what a lot of people do? They take that opportunity to be clothed with pride and do it their own way. But look what he says here. God resists the proud. But I like this part. God gives grace to who? Wow. One of the biggest keys to applying the truth is humility. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418. 8913. And when you are humble and you do what you're told, God then fills your life with more grace. Yes. Yeah, he really does. Look what the next verse says. We don't want to miss that one. Therefore, I've heard it said many times in my life, when you see a therefore, you need to see what it's there for. Right? Yeah. Well, why, is, why is the therefore there for? Well, because he's telling you right here. God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble your neighbor. Yourself. Who? Yourself. Well, I tell you what, my neighbor needs to be humbled. Isn't that amazing how we can see that so clearly? And we didn't look in the mirror of the word at ourselves yet. Humble yourselves. You know what you could write down in your notes if you're writing notes to help this be imprinted on your mind? Esteem someone higher than yourself. So many times we see it in our children. We see it all, all over in Americans, Americans' lives. Everybody thinking about themselves. Well, what about me? I see, you know, hardly a day passes where I don't see a kid at my house upset. Most of the time it's the younger ones. As they mature, you see it less and less, praise God. But a mark of immaturity is you're going to be in the corner crying. Why? They did this to me. They left me out. They did. And I know sometimes people say things that it's really hurtful, etc. But if you esteem someone higher than yourself, it's amazing how that becomes a deflection to a lot of offense. That's right. Like it's so simple. Ask yourself, would you want someone to do this to you or say this about you or tweet this about you? And someone says, well, you... You're saying that, and I hear you talk about extreme grace preachers. Pastor, I don't like you talking about that. Well, you're going to hear that because if I was preaching extreme grace, I would want someone to call me out on it. Because let me tell you something. God is gracious, but he's gracious to the humble, not to the prideful. 
We got a nation full of prideful people and people are preaching grace to prideful people until you humble yourself. Under what? The way I want to do things. No, under the mighty hand of God. I tell you, it took me years before I even understood. I, I could quote that verse. I didn't even have a clue what that meant. I said in SMTI class one day, and Dr. Barkley said, under the mighty hand of God, that's the fivefold ministry. My wig flipped right off. I was like, whoa. I've never understood this. Somehow, I should have. Heard it preached in a different way. It's just somehow when I heard that, I thought, it's up to me to humble myself and esteem that fivefold gift that God's put in the church. So you can't find this in any other organization. That's why you have to be careful that your heart doesn't form a loyalty to some other organization higher than the church because it's the body of Christ on the earth. And when you start looking at the church like you do your job or some other organization you give your time to, and there's a lot of good ones you can. Nobody's mad. It's not sin to do that. But what I'm saying is this. There's only one organization that gives you the opportunity to do this verse. To humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Who's over you? Who do you allow to watch your life? Some people, they, get, they don't like it. No shouting. They don't feel the Holy Ghost on it. But who wrote this? The Holy Spirit. Somebody said, Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's trying to get across something to us. If you want more grace in your life, and Lord knows we all need more of that, we're going to have to humble ourselves. The very thing we don't want to do. And specifically, under the mighty hand of God. Why? That He may exalt you woo, in due time. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I'll tell you what, a couple of references there. If you won't grow weary while you're doing good, in due time, due season, you will reap. Yeah. Some of you, I'm, I'm going to prophesy this over you right now. Somebody said, are you prophesying? Yeah. God is going to exalt you just to the degree you humble yourself. You got scripture on that. You can take that to the bank. God will exalt you. Here's the good news. When God exalts you, no man can tear you down. Woo! Boy, man will try, but they can't tear down what God exalts. Oh, hey, how do I stay humble, Pastor? Do the Word. Doing the Word will keep you humble. Why? You're simply doing what you're told, which means you don't know everything. You see that? Since you don't know everything, He's the Creator. His perspective is from a higher position than yours. He sees a lot. He sees a lot. We watched a, a movie. It was really a pretty good movie called Greater. And when we're watching it, it's a true story. And, and the, it was from Arkansas football players. And the quarterback was playing. And right in the middle of a game, he's sitting there complaining to his offensive lineman. Why are we even making this call? This ain't even going to work. This is stupid. And that lineman shook the quarterback and said, hey, the coach from up there has a different perspective than we do. And I was like, whoa, there's something to be valued right there in that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now that God has a different perspective than you do on your situation and your life. You say, well, I'm the one living it. I know, but he's got a higher perspective than yours. Remember Isaiah 55, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. Hey, he says this, as the rain and the snow comes from heaven on earth, what is that telling you? His is higher. Yours is lower. When you're up high, you've got a different perspective than down low. So what you need to do instead of walking around like this is you go low. He takes you high. Man, oh, man, that was worth you coming to hear. With one hallelujah, it's worth it. In other words, listen, you never get to the point in life where you've grown beyond doing the word. There's no one that's matured to the place, well, I no longer have to do the word. I'm God's man. That's a person that's about to fall. Because you never grow so big that you don't need to be told what to do because you're still a child of God. Hey, he said, come to me as little children. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. No, we don't ever shout on that one, do we? Do we? Do we? 
That means you've got to humble yourself and just believe what he tells you. I remember Mark was telling me, my father-in-law, that when my wife was young, the realization hit him. He could have told her the opposite of the way things really were, and she would have believed him. As a little child, that's what happens. You could tell them something. Think of that. That's exactly the kind of perversion that's going on all across this land in schools funded by governments, by taxpayers. They're teaching young children lies. Let me tell you something. You better watch what you do around children. Jesus takes it personal. You know what he said? He said, woe to you that offend one of these little ones. It would be better for you that a millstone, that's a heavy rock, is tied around your neck and you're thrown into the depths of the sea, then you offend one of these little ones. Woo-wee. I take that serious when I'm preaching the Word of God. Now, if you're a hard-nosed, hard-headed rebel, and you come up in here and say, I've got to preach sometimes hard to get through. My head's harder than yours in your rebellion because I've got the Lord with me and behind me because I am chose to be with Him. And so that's why I've got to just come and tell you something that you may not want to hear today, but you've got to have to humble yourself and do the Word of God and be willing to do a checkup and say, wait a minute, is there an area in my life I'm not doing the Word? Fruit never lies. If there's some area in your life that's not flourishing, you need to see, am I humble and submitted in that area? By the way, when I'm talking about humility... If you hear somebody talking about how dumb they are, I'm lowly as a worm. It's in some of the older songs, you know. I'm stupid. None of that is humility at all. Being humble is speaking what God said about you. Looking at yourself the way God looks at you. How does he look at you? You may have done stupid things, but stop identifying as a stupid person. Humble people don't say, well, I'm just nothing. I'm just dumb and so stupid. I don't, nah, that's not humble at all. That's actually pride. Because you're looking at things the wrong way. The humble say what God said about them. What did God say about you? It's a good thing to know, right? Yeah. Here's what you need to know. The humble get more empowerment. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the series in its entirety. And if you would like to hear the rest of the application of truth, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo, Texas. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.